Hey everybody, it's nice. I hope all of you who feel everyone doesn't deserve a trophy is having a nice day. Today, I want to touch up on some recent drama in the Ashes of Creation community, as well as emphasize a very important message from Ashes of Creation creative director Stephen Sharif. That message is as follows. Ashes of Creation won't be for everyone, and that's okay. So if you've been keeping an eye on uh, multiple discords or your YouTube feed, you've probably seen a lot of the recent controversy that has sparked. It's all, this all really sparked with uh, Lucky Ghost's video that we did a live reaction to. So Lucky Ghost posted a video and within hours we did a live react to it. I want to do a live reaction to it simply just off the thumbnail alone. Um, but in this video, uh, and I'll have that video linked here at the end of the video and in the description as well for those who are interested. But in that video, there was a lot of uh, fear mongering and bold statements like you will not like this game. It will fail. It needs to do this. We need to separate PVP and PVE. And um, I feel like there was a lot of misinformation and I feel like the video could turn off a lot of players or new players that was interested in getting Ashes of Creation. Um, in the video, he mentioned he's not anti PVP, which I, I believe um, I just think he just went about his message uh, the wrong way, just in my opinion. So we reacted to that video since then. I've seen multiple videos come up on my feed about, uh, you know, reacting to that as well. Even Osmond Gold has uh, reacted to the video. So it's definitely gotten some, uh, definitely gotten some traction. And uh, today I realized something really good, uh, something I've spoke on before actually that I'm excited for this game simply because of the lead developers communication, how hands on they are, how well they listen to feedback and listen to their community. Why do I say this? Well, Steven actually commented on Lucky Ghost's video. Not only did he comment on Lucky Ghost's video, he actually commented on Osmond's video as well, clearing up a lot of the miscommunication from uh, Lucky Ghost's video and a lot of player concerns with griefing and everything like that and so what we're gonna do right now is go ahead and uh, look at Steven's response on both uh, Lucky's video and Osmond's video and then uh, yeah so let's go ahead and start off with Lucky's video Steven says as follows just a few points I'd love to add much of Ash's corruption system has taken into account these concerns and my experience with similar flagging systems such as that of L2s and I'm pretty sure that means lineage 2 uh, these were apparent flaws in implementation. Some of the adjustments that have been made for Ash's approach to open world flagging system is as follows. Abilities with CC effects do not apply to non-combatants. The target of a CC ability must be flagged in order to suffer the CC effects. This prevents players from opening attacks that stun players during a pull, for example. So I'm going to pause right here. Um, something that Lucky mentioned a lot in his video was he was painting worst case scenarios where you and your friends are in a dungeon and then your group gets targeted by these griefers that are constantly stunning your tank and pulling your tank and everything like that and uh Steve just wanted to clarify that he goes on to say corruption gain also takes into account level disparity between the player killed and the player corrupted the greater the disparity the higher the corruption occurred PK alts would be highly ineffective since acquiring corruption will apply dampening effects on skill damage for PvP. The higher your corruption score becomes, working corruption off through EXP grinding also takes significantly longer than Lineage 2, and during that time we've created a bounty system that reveals corrupt player locations on the map. That's something I didn't see Lucky touch on at all, which is easily available in the wiki, which we will get to later. Uh, that value system, Hunter, uh, I, I'm not going to get into it. Let me just finish the quote. It is true that Ashes is a PVX game, and that means it won't be for everyone, and that's okay. Testing will further refine our approach for corruption, but as a system, it is core to introducing risk versus reward in Ashes while disincentivizing griefing. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me a DM on Discord or Twitter. First thing I wanted to acknowledge there, um, very open to communication. He just said, hey, just shoot me a DM. Um, something else is, um, once again, that message, it won't be for everyone and that's okay. I really like it. Let's go ahead and get into, uh, Osman's video. Osman did a video react and, uh, Steven's message is as follows. Greetings, brother. Just wanted to offer my thoughts on the role of PVP in Ashes. I'm sitting on a plane right now, flying back to San Diego, and I just finished listening. I have a lot of thoughts on the role of open world PVP in a game like Ashes, but I'll try to stay concise since I'm on my phone. 
First and foremost, PvP and Ashes exist in both opt-in systems and events as well as open world flagging system. And while it's true that I enjoyed and took much inspiration from games like Lineage 2, we have innovated and adapted our approach to Ashes flagging system in order to further disincentivize griefing while still allowing the system to keep risk relevant in the open world setting. The overwhelming majority of player experiences with Ash, well, excuse me, with PvP and Ashes will be through consensual systems like caravans, sieges, wars, the open sea, and other events. Players will make a choice to participate in those systems or not. And if they choose to participate, there will be significant rewards for success. In the open world, when competing for the scarcity of resources, raids, dungeons, and or hunting grounds, an important element of risk versus reward is introduced through our flagging system. Players must be aware of their surroundings and the reputation of players who may be in proximity. The flagging system is intended to always provide an element of risk in all settings, but also architecture to ensure that griefing and player killing is almost never worth it. The subtleties of this system are complex, which is of course why it will require considerable testing and feedback. There's a good write-up on the flagging system as its intricacies at the Ashes Wiki, but ultimately your sentiments are correct. That griefing is bad and we feel we have created a system that will sufficiently deter the potential for rampant griefing as it occurred in other similar systems. But time and testing shall tell. So there's still from the feedback. Happy to talk more about this topic and any others you want. I do, after all, love these discussions. I love that he loves these discussions. And uh, as he mentioned there to uh, Osmond Gold, um, there's a lot of this information in the wiki to kind of like you know, calm you down about the potential uh, over griefing of players and being killed every time you want to go pick a resource. And, you know, I feel like a lot of those concerns are addressed. And even then, you know, the director is uh, Steven, that is, is not the lead. He, he's not concerned with hand holding and everyone gets a trophy and the experience is just you're just going to be some solo player playing your own treating your MMO like a single player game. It's just not going to happen here. Um, the risk versus reward factor is what really, really turned me on to this game and why I purchased my alpha. And it, I think it's so it's just so good, um, even how it affects the economy. Uh, I mentioned this in my live react, but if it takes a long journey in a caravan and hiring mercenaries to protect you to get that caravan of resources back to your uh, your main city after you do a lot of farming, that means that those resources you worked really hard to obtain is going to you know, be very expensive. It's going to be very lucrative. And I really like that. It's a PVX game. And this is what you would come to understand if you just did your research, listen to devs or just read the Ashes of Creation Wiki occasionally, in my opinion. Um, for the rest of this video, I will be using a wiki, which is easily available to anyone for free who is just willing to research. I'll be having a couple images on screen. Uh, I'm not going to do too much of a deep dive, but um, on screen here, feel free to pause. I will have a couple of uh, screenshots that uh, pretty much break down uh, the player corruption system, flagging PvP system, as far as stuff that we know available right now. Um, I know that everyone's not going to watch those hour long developer streams and all the interviews like me and i feel like the wiki is a great source that compiles all that information for us into one place um it's just really good if you don't have the time everything that's on that wiki is typically sourced to where they got that information from the part of the interview how they know this is a fact and everything like that um i will go ahead while this is playing just read uh two quotes one from jeffrey bard another lead game designer and then another one from steven let's start off with jeffrey uh he says because players are motivated by different things because they want something different from the game that other players don't want that's going to cause people to butt heads different players are going to want different experience and the conflict the conflict between the two of them will create a bigger and better thing out of strife uh comes rebirth and that's a core symbol it's a core thing that occurs throughout the game, says Jeffrey. Steven uh, has a quote here that I felt was pretty relevant to all the drama going on. Just because our flagging system gives corruptions to PKers doesn't mean PvP won't happen. There's plenty of reason to PvP for PvP to occur in open world. Scarce resources, open world hunting grounds, caravan sieges, guild wars, etc. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, leave this uh, here. Um, 
in conclusion, thank you for everything. Thank you for listening, especially if you made it to the end of the video. Um, don't click off yet as I will have an important interview that really spoke to me and a lot of my friends and fellow content creators uh, that you know, it just really resonated with us. So you'll probably see this quote posted a lot. Um, before I go, I would like to go ahead and give a special shout out to Envious Gaming, who's been uh, supplying a lot of the footage that you've been seeing here and will be supplying a lot of footage that uh, came from Alpha One since I did not get a chance to participate in Alpha One. Um, and I also want to give a shout out to the guild, um, which is uh, Envious, and we're going to be a pretty big guild as soon as the game starts. So uh, I'll leave links to uh, my Discord the Envious Discord, the official Ashes of Creation Discord, our community Ashes of Creation Discord. And uh, yeah, we really look forward to seeing you there. Um, if you ever need to communicate with me, the comment section or Discord direct message is a good way to do so or in Discord. So um, without further ado, let me leave you guys with this uh, powerful message from Steven. Thank you so much to channel members, subscribers, and everyone. See ya. There needs to be risk associated with opportunity. We've always said risk and reward, right? Opportunity and risk. That's how you weigh actions. And players now know when they move into the open sea, they are doing so in a method that requires them to be cognizant of their player surroundings. Who is near me? Who can mess with me? Who, who do I need to make friends with? Who do I know my enemies are? Um, who can I forge alliances with? How can I create flotillas of protection, right? These are things that as a dynamic of political intrigue, um, and the seas are a great place for that. We always know about the stories of like privateering and, you know, the ability <laughs> to kind of work under anonymity. Um, well, you're going to know who's attacking you, but uh, it's important to note that you're prepared. You need to be prepared for that. And that is a, that is a big, that is a big um, change that we, you know, have made several months ago um, that we're revealing to you now. And that's also needing to be a topic of conversation. This, I would love to get feedback right now. I'm seeing a lot of yays in chat. Um, and we need to take those yays and we need to go on Reddit. We need to go on our forums and we need to talk about this mechanical change. Um, because in my opinion, this this type of change creates a very compelling type of gameplay. Um, and not everybody is excited about PvP, mm -hmm. but as I've always said, Ashes of Creation is not meant to be the game for everyone, right? There are a lot of games where it is entirely safe to exist on a server, and you don't have to worry about threats or risk, right? It's just all opportunity. I know I'll eventually get the trophy, Right. I just need to I just need to run in the hamster wheel a bit longer and then I'm going to get there like that. Everyone gets that trophy. What we want to do with Ashes is we want to get to work for it. Re rethink that approach. <laughs> right. We want to we want to encourage. Intelligent calculations of risk versus reward. Right. These are elements that I think players feel really accomplished when they know that they overcame risk for the trophy. Oh, 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 oh,